Alyssa taught physics and horseback riding at a boarding school in Ojai, California. One day she was out with a group of students leading her horse when her horse got spooked and kicked her in the face. Alyssa's face was shattered and she had to be rushed via a helicopter to a hospital. Alyssa's, the doctors diagnosed Alyssa as having trauma to her brain, eyes, and face. The trauma to her face included multiple maxillofacial fractures, as well as paralysis to the left side. And in addition, she had trauma to her vision, which included temporary blindness in one eye. Alyssa also experienced both autobiographical and procedural memory loss, meaning that she had trouble remembering certain events in her life and also had to do certain procedures, tasks, or skills. This is an x-ray of Alyssa's face. The two arrows are pointing to a crown she had to have on one tooth and also a root canal that she had to have as a result of the accident. The area in yellow is an area that was pulverized by the kick. Alyssa had to have tooth implants and also bone grafts of this section. Here you can see uh, metal that was added to her mouth in the form of plates and screws that hold her upper and lower jaws together. And this is also more plates and screws. They're actually holding her eye socket in place. And there's actually also a piece of mesh that's forming the, the base of her eye socket. Alyssa had to have 31 reconstructive surgeries on her face. Prior to this accident, Alyssa was not only an avid horseback rider, but she was also a physics teacher. Another cool thing I had learned about Alyssa was she was also a lightning researcher. This is an, an area I had never even heard about. So she would go into the field in New Mexico in the summer and she'd actually live in a bunker and she would study lightning strikes and collect data from those strikes. Alyssa also was a music lover. She played piano. In addition to that, she played French horn for 16 years prior to this accident. Now, Alyssa and I met in 2011. This is 10 years before her accident. I met her because she was trying to sell her French horn. She came to me and asked if I could help her sell it, and in the process of handing it to me, now this is the same French horn you see in this photograph, she literally broke into tears. Now this is the first time she and I had ever met, and I had no idea what was going on, and I was just like, whoa, 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 you don't have to sell this horn. So Alyssa proceeded to tell me that this horn was given to her by her parents when she was in eighth grade. And part of that deal is she promised her parents she would play it for the rest of her life. In addition to that, the doctors had told her after her accident that she probably would never go back to work, much less play her horn again. So at this point, I asked Alyssa, have you ever worked with a horn teacher? And she told me since her accident, and she told me no, she had not. And I said, well, if you're willing to drive to the Colburn School in downtown Los Angeles where I teach French horn, I'd be willing to show you everything I know about it and let's see if we can get you to play again. Alyssa seemed a little hesitant, but she agreed and was really excited. And so we started a journey together. My background is, is a little varied, but very important when reviewing Alyssa's case. I have um, three degrees in French horn performance, a, a bachelor's, a master's, and a doctorate. In addition to that, um, I also played college tennis. And I feel that I have a great kinesthetic awareness from being able to play this sport for so many years. And also I have a really large interest in anatomy, partially because I got injured a lot <laughs> as a tennis player and also as a horn player several times. Finally, my mom was diagnosed with a benign meningioma, which is a very slow growing brain, uh, brain tumor when I was 24 years old. And this really grasped my interest in the brain and how it worked. And I tried to get any book or any type of item about the brain that I could get my hands on at this point in my life and read about it and understand the brain because I knew I'd have to help my mom with her rehabilitation. One of the books I came across is a book by Norman Deutsch entitled The Brain That Changes Itself. It's an amazing book if you've never read it, but it basically taught me that the brain has plasticity, meaning that neural pathways in the brain can be mapped, remapped, paved, and repaved. And this, at the point with, in my mom's journey as well as in Alyssa's journey really changed my life. All of these things combined kind of gave me hope that I could actually help Alyssa in her path. When we started working together, one of the biggest questions that I had was, is the amount of pressure placed on Alyssa's face going to interfere with all these facial, you know, uh, procedures she's had done, implants and her facial reconstruction. So I did a bunch of research and I consulted 
all different types of surgeons and doctors, including her um, oral maxillofacial surgeon. And I also read a bunch of dissertations. And what I concluded is that the amount of pressure placed on her face by a brass instrument is actually not going to interfere with it. Alyssa had told me at one point she was actually attempting to try to play the horn on her own, and she got a great deal of pain, and she also couldn't make a sound. So that pain was of concern to me, and at this point, I also wanted to make sure what is that pain. After consulting all these different doctors and, and medical books, I realized that partially that pain could be caused by all these neural um, paths and, and formations being made in her brain. So at this point, I said to Alyssa, start coming to see me at Colburn, and let's, let's see what we can do. So Alyssa, on the first few weeks we got together, I realized that we actually didn't even need to touch a French horn. That what we needed to do was make her, give her more of a kinesthetic awareness of her face. So I want to introduce you to someone today that has been played a large part in Alyssa's and my journey. And this is a friend of mine. His name is Seymour. And my students call him Seymour because, quite frankly, you can see more. And so <laughs> there are 43 muscles in the face. And so we wanted to make sure that Alyssa started to understand which muscles she would be needing to use and find again as she was to relearning to play the horn. And one of the muscles that's the most important for us as a brass player in the face is known as the abicularis oris. Now this muscle runs in a circle behind the lips and the muscle is not attached to bone, which is one of the only muscles in the entire body that's not attached to bone. So what this means is this muscle is attached to other muscles, which are then attached to bone. And so for Alyssa, just understanding where this muscle lived was of great importance. So at this point in our journey, I decided that we needed to, this is the first few times we're getting together, I decided that we also needed to just start to strengthen her face. So through my athletic background, I developed a, an exercise program just like I would use in any rehabilitation of myself when I was injured. So we started this out with a warm-up process. Now, I want all of us here today, we're going to go through this together. So we started out with a warm-up process. And what that just meant is that we're going to take our tongue and we're going to run it behind that orus and just get blood flow to that region. So I want everybody out here, I want you all to try that. So go ahead and start running your tongue behind your lips. And we're going to get this region warmed up. Now, we would do this for about 10 seconds. It's getting a lot of good blood flow. And try to also target all those muscles that are attaching to the bicularis oris. Okay, good. You all are looking great. All right. And then from there, we're going to do um, the next set of the uh, exercise routine, which are light stretches. So now this is just as simple as putting air pockets all around your mouth. So we're going to also try that together for about 10 seconds. So literally just put air pockets in your face. And move them all around. Yep, you're looking great. A lot of good noises. And so that's light stretches. Now, I have to ask, who all in here has ever done face exercises before? Anybody? You can be honest. It's okay. All right, we've got a couple. All right, I appreciate that. Um, so there is actually a fad that has gone around over the last few years of face exercises. And I have to say what's really important about face exercises, if you decide to do them, is that you're targeting all those muscles in your face. It's like if you went to the gym, you're not going to go to the gym and just work out your biceps and expect to walk away with a six-pack, right? It doesn't work like that. So you've got to make sure and work all these muscles out. So I have to show you a couple tools that are on the market right now. This is a VHS tape that I found in my mom's collection. It's uh, from the 80s. It's facial magic and face aerobics. Dr. Oz has even had a segment out called Face Your Size. And recently I was on a trip to Japan and literally got to my hotel room, sat down, turned on the television, and this is the first thing I saw. I was amazed. It's face yoga. You can see there's a lot of different things out on the market about it, but the number one thing you need to look for is to make sure that whatever you're doing is targeting all the muscles in the face as much as you can. And what we're showing you today is just a snippet of what Alyssa did. She did about 20 minutes of face exercises twice a day. So the next thing we're going to show you is a set of endurance or strength training exercises, also known maybe as calisthenics. These are from a book that is published in Spanish, or in Spanish, um, by a doctor named Dr. Jaume Roset, and it's a book called Atono. So this first one is called The Kiss, and it literally is just what it sounds like. So we're going to just take our lips and move them as far away from your face as you can, literally just like you're going to kiss someone. Okay, let's all try that. Make sure it's looking good. So you're going to hold that for 10 seconds. Now, if we were doing this entire set, you would actually 
repeat each of these five times. And I don't know how many of you are Tony Horton P90X fans, but he would say in this case that this is the mother of all face workouts, okay? So, from, so after we've done that one for 10 seconds, we're gonna now move to the fish, okay? And this is a variation of the kiss. So everybody form your kiss and now show me some teeth, okay? And you're gonna hold that for 10 seconds. Now I have to say, that if you actually do, he has, Dr. Rosette has six exercises. If you actually did all of them and repeated them five times, you really do feel like you've been to the gym for your face. So, so you'll have to try them at some point. So from here, what Alyssa and I did, we've, we now moved to task specific exercises. So this was to help her learn to form what the face would look like with the French horn on it. And we actually use straws, different sized straws. So the, we use coffee straws, medium sized straws, regular straws like you'd find at McDonald's, or boba straws. And we would actually have her try those out. So Alyssa and I did these exercises, like I said, twice a day, and we did them every, every day of the week, and she did this for five weeks. Now I'm gonna show you some before and after pictures of this process. So she did these exercises about 70 times. So this is day one, week one, and what you'll see is not very much muscle definition, and I have to say in both of these initial pictures you'll see, Alyssa had to go sit in front of a mirror and figure out how to make this face. Now this is day one, week five, you can see the amount she's able to bring her, her lips off of her face, which to me was just amazing. Now we're gonna move to the fish, the ones we did today. The this is again day one, week one. Look at how asymmetric that is. And now here's day one, week five. This to me was amazing progress. So you can see how, how now symmetric that is and how much, sh how much stronger she is in her face. So Alyssa and I worked, this, we worked on this for about five weeks and then from there, we actually started to pick up her horn and play single notes and then moved on from there. So I actually want you now to get to hear from Alyssa. This is Alyssa about six months into us working together. I haven't been playing a ton, but I've been playing a, a lot. Anyway, it's, it's, it's hard to find time because you know we were talking about how I've been extra busy, but um, I'm playing enough and I'm, it's joyful. Cool. <laughs> it feels now uh, more like I'm out of shape and a little incompetent as opposed to feeling like things are really, really hard and I can't figure them out and my mouth won't work. And I feel more like a recovering beginner or out of shape expert than I feel like an injured disaster. And it feels like it could all honestly come back. It feels like everything could maybe work. As, and I could maybe play really well again. It feels like it might be in there. It all feels really possible. So now this is her playing her horn, um, also around the same time about six months later. <laughs> So Alyssa has gained all four passions back in her life. She's researching lightning. She's back teaching physics in the classroom. She's on the horse, which I could not believe again, horseback riding again. And she is also playing horn. What has been amazing to me for this, through this entire process is so many years after her accident, what positive repetitions could do for her and how much stronger her mouth could actually get. It's obvious to me that Facial muscles, just like any other muscle in the body, can be worked out. And, and that, to me, is, is just incredible. So what I would like you to take away from this is that other victims of trauma, such as paralysis and stroke, should hopefully be encouraged by, by her story as well. What we've also learned is that her diction, not only can she play horn again, but her diction is also improved from this whole process. So Alyssa, 
has now progressed so much that in the summer of 2014, she was actually able to perform with the Colburn Adult Wind Symphony, and that's, that was her most recent performance. And also, um, as a teacher and a coach, what I've taken away from this is that it's been an inspiring and amazing journey, but particularly, I can't give up on someone in their dream. Thank you.